They own their baboon. They own their baboon. Oh, they own their baboon. Oh, I'm out. I think um, if you, I don't know if you wanted to resend out like a reminder. Link. Oh, did the reminder not go out to it everyone? Did not. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. I was. I wasn't sure. I. Yeah, I was messing with my Google Calendar. I don't know. I might not have hit the right button. Let me see if I can send another reminder out. Okay. I know yeah. uh, Miss Brenda is trying to log in and Miss Velma called me. So she's okay. going to try to log in too. Okay. Okay, um, so I'll go ahead and send another reminder out. Okay. Yeah, some people are probably just getting, like I did, got on on, you know, previous ones. All right, while we're waiting, uh, let's go ahead and do our opening prayer. Uh, Grandma D, wait outside. So, Paman, God, they don't want to get our attention on you. And that the Mago dog will get the Tado dog, get Tom now. God don't give. Get hard it all. Go with the. Get God don't sign it all. They all they go down the awful. They tie the old God get going behind the good tongue it all. And hide it all the old key. I'm on the go good. A good old old key. I'm the own time. They I'm the baby tied old key. I'm begging you to all to you there. I you can't pay to your daughter turn to the tide day. Get it up. A day more to go. A good dog. They call me. Or in town dog. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. <clears throat> So probably more people are joined when that pops out. Oh, yeah. And I think uh, Miss Brenda keeps trying to log in, but I, her connection keeps dropping. Or she might have the old one bef uh, from before. Oh, started. that's a good point. Yeah, that's true. So, Let me make sure. So while we're waiting, um, since do you want me to pause the recording or do you want me to keep recording and um, Cricket kind of give an overview? Oh, wait, there's Ramon. Wait, though. Okay. And he can probably do some overview too. <clears throat> I could talk a little bit about what we did on Monday class. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that'd be good. Hi, Ramon. Hyundai, Hyundai, and Bon. We're just getting started. Oh, I'm out of Hyundai, Hyundai, and Bon. Oh. Um, oh. um, well, one of the things uh, I gave people for homework was um, how you put together Dane's lesson two, level two, lesson one. So I told people that they had to, next class had to write 
their conversation out. And we had new people from, I think from Denver um, that joined, some Kiowas that joined. And uh, anyway, so write that on your, on your page, on that page four. Um, so anyway, uh, so just writing out that conversation so we can practice it next time we meet. And then, um, the other thing was going over those, um, uh, kinship terms, um, that, you know, are not, you know, direct up or down lineage or cousins or something or aunts or uncles. And, uh, and so we're doing that, you know, with husband or wife is he or he and, um, father-in-law E Adel or Adel E mother-in-law was song he or Adel song he, um, son-in-law was yak kya daughter in law was yat ma um yat ma and then brother in law was ise da day ise da day and then sister in law yat ma and then we had a male friend sibling term um was sa sa te and then a female friend, sibling, friend term was Tom Thay. Anyway, so that's what we went over um, in our Monday class. Uh, let's see. Um, and then I kind of had like a little quiz for people over... Um, some of our uh, uh, command, our command learning. Um, so was uh, Thai day hodl da bot do. Okay, does anybody remember? I don't have it in front of me, but <clears throat> does anybody remember that one? Put on your jacket. Oh, uh, Thai day hodl da. Bot zone. Take it off. Yeah. Um, do they main do? Catherine, do you know that one? Kathy? On a there? Um, I'm doing a little quiz, what we went over with on Monday. Um, yeah, uh, I was there Monday. Do you have the notes? <clears throat> Did um, you make any notes or anything? Yeah, do you have? I sent them out the about an hour or so ago. Um, okay, I didn't get anything. So are you on my Monday class email? I come in every once in a while. Like you know, it just depends on if I'm busy. Yeah, but well, are you on my email? I send it out on that Monday. No. Okay, so you, if you want me to add you. Um, do you, would you put your email in the chat and I'll add you to it? Oh, okay. Anyway, it, yes, this does not have net. I mean, I, it, it's a quiz. So nobody had these notes. Okay. Um, so Thode main do what, what you can hear some of the words in there. What do you think I'm saying? Well, it's a shoe. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Where are you at? Thode main, oh, main. Okay, you need to come back. What's that, man? Okay, so like, so listen to the words, and then I'm gonna go over the other thing that um, Ramon just did. I said, "Tie day hodl da bot do." Do you want to tell her what it is again, Ramon? Put on your jacket. Okay. Now here's this one. Do day main do. Uh, so, put on your shoes. There you go. So what's the verb in there? Put on. I don't I mean, know. In Kiowa. In Kiowa. 
What's the verb in there in Kiowa? So go. you say, yes, go. Okay. yes, ha. So that's the verb, do. So you know that that's the, you know, putting on part, right? And then uh, now listen to this one. Um, throw the main zone. Can you say that, Miss Herriger? Is that correct? Mm. Throw the main zone. Okay. Um, so what do you think that means, Miss Kathy? Throw the main zone. Take your shoes oh, off. Two. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. So no, what's no. the verb? What's the verb in that one? Off. Zone. Kiowa. Yeah. Zone. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, so what's the verb to put on? Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm not. Uh, let me get back my head back in the game here. I'm trying to get my product on. <laughs> I'm doing that. I'm trying to listen. So let me get my paperwork out and everything. Okay. Well, be in any of your paperwork. I'm just trying to get you to hear oh. it. Okay. You're not going to have okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Hang on. So this is uh, all hearing. Right. Uh, okay. So, hey, so main do, tie day hodl dal bot do. What is the verb to put on? I don't know. Can uh, you tell her, Carolyn. Do. Yeah. Do. do. Ha. Correct. So, um, and you always know the verb in Kiowa is almost always going to be at the end of the sentence. So when you're hearing Kiowa, that's how you're going to, you know, think, okay, that verb, the action part is going to be at the end uh, most of the time. So um, what was another one? Here's some other parts of the quiz that we had Monday. Um, okay. Bay Mon Pedal. Do you know that one? Who Who's on here? I don't know. Melody, if you're on. No. This is the quiz. You had a quiz? Hey, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Can you repeat that, Cricket? I, just, I was just sending that email out. I think I got it sent off. So Okay, good. Um, um, we're just, okay, so what we're doing is I, I'm, I gave everybody a quiz. They did not have any paperwork. Now we went over this in the springtime, so they didn't have it. Maybe we may be touched on in the summer, but so they haven't, you know, really had this. And it was a quiz that, and it's just a hearing quiz. So it wasn't, you're not going to have this paperwork. But um, one thing uh, was, uh, Ramon did this one, um, tie day hodl da bot do. And then main dough. So here's the one um, that I asked you. Um, so that was the same verb, right? This one is bay mon pedal. Wash your hands. There you go. So what is the uh, verb in that one? Pe pedal. Right. Beetle. That's the washing part. For right? washing, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So um, let's see. Uh, so that was mine. Um, Carolyn, Bay Zon Pedal. Brush your teeth. Oh, um, if I say this correctly, because I don't have it in front of me. Bay O Pedal. Um, Ramon. Oh, <clears throat> real quick. On the inside, uh, I've oh. also heard it as O La Bay Pedal. Yes, you can say it that way too. That's how Miss um, uh, Graham, um, uh, Ekawada would say it. Oh, coma. Oh. Um, huh. Okay. So, um, Kathy, 
What uh, is the verb in those sentences? Beetle. Ha. Ah, and what does it mean? Wash. Wash, yeah. So just like hearing, just hearing that stuff. So saying a few uh, commands with, with that, with the verb at the end. And um, then if I said, uh, what was another one? I think it was mostly those. Oh, I know what one was. Okay. Um, Melody, um, Bay Hedel Bay. Uh, let's see. Bay Hedel Bay. Bay Hedel Bay. And I, I'm, I can uh, give you a clue. What you say? thong ya. Heedle or uh, can you say it in another sentence? Okay, let me let me get, do a clue if you look at the screen. Okay, this is kind of like how I do it, and it's like helps me remember it in TPR. So, bay heedle bay, bay bong, bay heedle bay, bay bong, or you can do um, bay heedle bay, bay bong. Cricket, you need to say people are. Okay, people are. Uh, okay. Uh, then you said at the beginning, people are. People are. Bay Hedel Bay. Does that help you, Melody? Bay Hedel Bay. 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 Okay. Uh, let's see who is there. Um, Ramon, were you there? Yeah, he might not have been I'll there for that one. I'll see if his hand sign will help. If you go, okay, okay, yeah, that's a good one. Pia Boa or Bay Hedel Bay. I like that, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that helped any melody. Did that help any? Um, I couldn't really. I think I saw you for a second, but if you could, uh, let's see. Pen Can I try to spotlight Pen you. Yeah, spotlight um, Ramon. Okay. Uh, oh. Or, or actually, if you just like make, if you talk, then it'll put you on the screen. Okay. Oh, you know what? I can go over here and I can do it for real. Oh, shoot. I'm still connected. Okay. Go ahead and do that, and then I'll do mine. I want to say that's the sign. I think, yeah, I think it is. Okay. Is it off the line? Okay, so this yeah. is... Hedle Bay. Bay, Hedle Bay. Bay, oh. bon. Bay, Hedle Turn Bay. So, Pia Bon, Ada, Bay, Bon. Turn off the light, turn on the light. Yeah. So uh, so I just like act like I'm lifting the light switch. <laughs> it helps me remember. Turn it on. Turn it off. So, but literally, those are two different verbs. And um, and that is, um, and, and you're saying light the fire and then put out the fire. Oh, that was just our little quiz that we did on Monday. That's awesome. So we had ones about getting in and out of cars. We did that like in the winter. Um, oh, that's cool. Uh, let's see, um, way, uh, what did we say? Way I'm so right. You remember that one? Oh. And so, oh. and then way ma so, way ba so, right? So you know that one is getting the out of the car, getting down from the car, right? Um, and then getting into the car. Um. They uh says, so aim heedle, ma heedle. Bahil. 
So that's getting up onto it, the car. And so those are just some of the, the things that we've done in that class. We try to do something that we have to act out or use our body for. Uh, Courtney, I'm always doing a and needle, and and needle, my needle. And what was the other one? For what? For what's and what's what'd you just say? For, uh, for the, so you know how you tell somebody to get down off their horse or get out of their car? Oh. Hey, okay. And how you could kind of remember it because people remember this one easy is like you say, way, aim so, or way, ma so, or way, ba so. That's one or two or several people, right? You're telling them to get down. When, you, when they get, come to your house, right? Out of their car or off their horse. And then you want them, if they're get, you want to tell your kids to get into the car, you know, or, you know, because uh, you're getting ready to leave. You would say, if it's just one of your kids or your husband or something, you'd say, uh, what is it? Aim Heedle. Are you saying aim or a and e n or a i n m? I'm saying e m aim. E m okay. Aim. But that's just for one person. And, and you know, have you looked at your pronouns? <laughs> Kathy? I haven't looked at anything. I have a business and I'm just, I'm in the, it's in the busiest part of the season right now. So I'm trying to get that done and yeah, yeah I haven't been able to do anything. Okay, so on your pronouns, you'll, you know, if you're one, two, or a lot of people, aim is one, ma is two, Ba is a lot. And okay. that's just for that, but that's only for that verb. Okay. So when you say down for two, so way ma? Yes. Okay. Oh. So is that verb? No, you don't need to say way. You just say maso. Maso. Mm -hmm. And then you say, uh, basso. Yes. But I think it would help you a lot if you got the structure. Like if you looked at, um, and you got, you know that your verb is the last thing and that little pronoun is right in front of the verb. And then if you, and that way, when you're here in Kiowa, um, you, it can kind of start making sense to you. And it won't just sound like sounds coming at you. You'll get, so you'll my, understand the the structure of it. So my so, the so mm -hmm. is the verb. Yes, ha, oh, correct. And then so that is, uh, is that get out or get down? It's get off your horse or get off. But you that, use the same that. thing for a car. Okay, so. Yeah, so what, Miss Harriger? She said, does that mean get down? So that's the same as get off. Get off, yes. Okay. You mean, you're getting, you're hitting the ground one way or the other. <laughs> oh, okay. And then, okay, so many. Okay, oh, so two. So both get, get off, get down. Oh. Okay. Okay, all right. I laugh. I say I could get this right now. I'm just swamped. I'm just, you know, but I, I, I want to do this, so I'm here. Yeah. So I'm getting that. You're That's good. awesome. So feeling. at least you hear it while you're here, right? So aim head, aim heedle, aim head heedle. Is it heedle? Yeah, H I L. H I L. And then ma heedle. 
and Bahil. Correct. So uh, get into the car. Uh, you get into the car. Yeah, it's, these are commands. Yeah. So which ones you get into the car? M? M Heedle? E M aim. Aim Heedle. Yeah. That's what I want. Okay. Oh. That's one person. Great. Okay. That's what I thought, but I said E M. And I spell it A I M, so I mean because that's way I'm trying to get my mind to get off the phonics part, but it's not working very well. Yeah. If I'm you getting, if you ever took Spanish or French, no, it was easy. no, no, heck no. Yeah. See, I took French, so it's easy for me because it's the same. It's the same as. Oh, I didn't letters. have to take any language. I was I was rebellious about taking any other language, and other than you know what I had to take, but I really wanted to do Kiowa. So oh yeah, we had to take it to graduate. I just had two yeah. years. For some time. reason, I got I got by with it. I, my I parents it. I argued it. about it with the school yeah. and said Ooh, that they didn't want me to learn another language, <laughs> you know, uh, leaving it open for Kiowa, you know, I guess. But we never got around to that until now. <laughs> 40 yeah, years later, you know. Yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, that was it. That's all. That was, um, that's a little bit what we did in class. Uh, do you have anything that you'd like to add Ramon about like some of the stuff you're teaching in your class? In my, uh, at the Carnegie class the school. Huh. Um, yeah, I mean, we're kind of just, uh, right now we're in, um, based off of how um, the 10 language themes is kind of uh, geared, we're kind of in the second section right now. We're about to finish this section um, called Daily Life. So this has uh, been where we're talking about um, you know, and giving different uh, responses to it, not just saying ah, but I also gave them some negative responses to that, like saying yeah. Um, a coat doll, a song they doll, a con time or saying a on time, um, just different things like that. Um, and then also asking, you know, how to him con, you know, Ramon a con, on the on the him all day, how to him goi con, you know, good to him tell ya goi con or. Uh, um, let's see what else and then like I gave I gave them uh, colors that was another thing we went over uh -huh. um, and then on that we spent like a couple of days most of the week actually on colors um, and I gave them <clears throat> a couple of sheets to work on like where they colored uh, buffalo um, and then I had one where they could, you know, in a way, paint their own teepee or, you know, color their own teepee with crayon. Um, so during that portion, um, like we had gone over the words and then just uh, reviewed that that day and then told them, you know, go ahead and uh, color this teepee however you want. And then I kind of just showed them pictures of um, some painted teepees from the Google Drive. Um, and just they're a little bit talking a little bit about historical significance but i'm not going to quiz them on that though most of the historic stuff or the any like cultural information that i choose to share um like i don't really quiz them on it's really just language so and it's pretty rare that i give them cultural stuff um but when i do I tend to like even on that discussion they were talking about I didn't know we had bands and then we started <laughs> to, to discuss the Sundance or they wanted to discuss the Sundance but with some ones there I told them like hey you know ask your grandpa like I know his grandpa's around and he can ask him and he has that knowledge but you know I just wanted to make sure I said I'm not really comfortable saying all that here so uh -huh. But um, yeah, it's been going good so far. They really enjoy it. Um, the other quote, Hande, side though. Hande. 
Um, so like when you say these things, um, because our sounds can be overwhelming to somebody that's never heard Kiowa before. Oh. Um, have you noticed them uh, kind of like where they can't, it's like it's too much, it's an overload for them? Or um, do you introduce just like um, a couple phrases at a time or how are, how, and how are you, are you noticing anything you like about them being overwhelmed or are they getting it? Um, so with the, yeah, with the first, with the actual first section that we did, um, there was a, a small portion where, um, uh, they didn't really understand, um, certain things, but also too, most of my class is freshmen. And after I did a quiz over kind of like the orthography and consonants and vowels and whatnot, I come to find out that apparently the English teacher that was there in the Carnegie Middle School for, I, I don't know if it was the previous year or a few years, had no formal English training. She she did not have her degree in English. She was something else. And they kind of just, hey, can you do this? You know, so um, I guess a lot of them didn't get <clears throat> some some of that information that's supposed to be there by the time they reach ninth grade. Like grammar stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I noticed that because like even with saying consonant or vowel um, or what a... Um, like a syllable is um, a pronoun, a noun, a verb. I mean, some simple stuff, like, and, <clears throat> but trying to categorize and, and build off of what should already be there, you mm -hmm. know, but then having to go back and say, okay, you know, remember what's a noun, a person, place, or thing. Yeah. You know, what's a verb? It's, it's action, you know, and then, uh so there was a little bit of difficulty at first um with that first um couple of tests and then i think on accident um the first translation quiz i gave them i accidentally did it from english to kiowa um and um there i mean you could tell whenever doing English to Kiowa and then whenever I changed it and went Kiowa to English, there was a, a very, very big difference. So it was much easier for them to go from uh, Kiowa to English, um, which is how we, where we go. Level one is yeah. supposed to be Kiowa uh, to English. Yeah, Kiowa to English and mm -hmm. then level two English to Kiowa. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I jumped a gun a little bit on accident because uh -huh. in a way, you know, I, I want them to be um you know speaking but i know um did I they get a little overwhelmed time. when that happened um yeah a little bit which um you know i supplemented some things gave them better assignments to like really ease that grade off um mm -hmm. and so but since we've switched over into kiowa to english um they've been a lot better um, especially about retaining and that that's one big thing too like that first uh like week and a half two weeks where we're going over orthography um there i mean there was spaced repetition um oh man uh there was spaced repetition but there was always trying and there was also trying to just introduce basic sounds to them like in a way kind of diving into that daily life portion a little bit where i'm explaining you know they saw they ha mm -hmm. um and then so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that was one and then even uh they saw han and like they wanted they even asked that question how do you 
I say, be quiet. And I said, well, I'll tell you on a little bit. <laughs> so, but then <laughs> I ended said up. it right then. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, but like I said, since we've switched over into uh, translating from uh, Kyrie to English, like I said, it's been better. Um, they take better notes now. Um, let's see. Now, I, I can stress this as much as I can, but honestly, I no one is in control of what they do outside of the classroom. I mean, just like us, you know, I, you know, we can come here for this one session during the week, you know, and spend this time here, but anything we do outside of here, I mean, really is what matters, how we use it every day, you know, so I try to stress that as much as possible to them, you know, hey, you know, try to use these phrases, um, just ask your friends, you know, how I put him dog. You know, that that way you're hearing it. That way you're hearing it, you're getting used to it. Because, I mean, you have to kind of create that. You have to go out there on your own. And I give them examples of, like, times that I'm outside of Carnegie and I'm talking to myself, even around friends um, up in Tulsa. And I had to even tell them one time how a friend got mad at me or he kind of got a little upset at me that I was speaking Kiowa, but I wasn't translating. And... Like, he kind of told me to stop. And I was like, well, I'm not going to. I, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me. Like, I'm sorry, bud, you know, that you're upset. You can't understand what I'm saying, but it's okay. Like, I'm not. And plus, we're good friends. I'm not going to be, like, belittling you or, you know, getting on to you or anything. You know, but I'm I'm not going to speak just speak english just to accommodate you especially i'm just talking to myself so i have to like tell them stuff like that you know create that need create that um desire um or even that habit of speaking outside of the classroom not being nervous you know um so but like i said i think that's the biggest area we run into plus in a way, that's why I want like classes to be revamped, especially in Carnegie and Anadarko, and possibly even I, I don't know if uh, there's a large Kiowa population in Weatherford, but mainly talking about where kids go after class, after high, after school, is home. You know, then I think we need to also garner that, garner more participation from parents, you know, grandparents, relatives. That way, there's more community speaking, even if it's a little bit, you know, but it's there. It's coming about. It's not right. just, oh, kids are only speaking in the classroom for 45 minutes out of the day. And then the rest of the time, they don't say anything. Mm -hmm. you know? So, but like I said, it comes down to their decision and their choice um, in which, you know, I can't, I can't control that. But I, I do think, 100 percent you know even when uh when i first started going to the classes in tulsa i i know i wouldn't be anywhere unless it was what i did outside of the classes yeah yeah well mom what about um to have phones could they record and oh then, well you know what what you say in class or whatever they want to say and then they they could play it back. Yeah, they they probably could. I haven't had any of them ask me. And I know, I mean, there is kind of a a slight policy about phones. Um, mm -hmm. Just because it's, uh, you know, especially as, you know, sound on now, it, there it's very easy for them to just get on it and escape into it and kind of, uh, tune everything else out um so i think that's why we try to just curve it and say don't have them out at all um but i i feel like i could tell them you know hey if y'all want to record these you know go into your voice memos or something on y'all's iphones and record 
you know, feel feel more than welcome to. Um, and, I can understand the yeah. problem in a public school. Oh. But beyond that, I think that's a good way to oh, learn. Oh, yeah. Oh. And uh, that's the problem with Kiowa, why we don't speak it. Because there's no one who speaks it. So we wow. don't. I'm 94 years old, and that's what I'm telling you. I, well, when I was small, before I went to school, I heard it all the time at home. And then uh, went to school, and the further I went to school, the less, less I spoke Taiwan. It was still spoken around me because there are a lot of elders, but I chose not to speak Kiowa because, and so that's what Kiowas have done. They choose to speak English. They did not choose to speak Kiowa. So we are our own, we're the ones, the word, we did it. We lost our language because we did not speak it. We chose not to. So what I rely on now is long-term memory I hear it comes back to me because I spoke it at home as a child up to age six and then oh. further I went in school the less I spoke it then my when we were preteens and teenagers we spoke it just to have fun you know just to see if we could speak it and say things and power and make it and to just to have fun and laugh, whatever we we said in Cairo. But outside right. that, we did not speak it. So mm -hmm. that's where we are. That's why we're where we are. So, and, and people talk about immersion. That is a very difficult thing to do because no one who I recall reading or when the Cherokees graduated their first class of uh, immersion, kids, one student said, well, yes, I speak Cherokee, but there's no one to speak Cherokee to. My parents don't speak it. Oh. So, so there you are. Immersion sounds good, but it's very difficult to do. To maintain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, that's, I just wanted to get a feel for, you know, how the kids were doing and some of the things that you taught, you know, some of the phrases and things that you were teaching. Um, so Melody, do you, is there anything that you could say about um, like some of the phrases and things that you're teaching in your class and how are your kids seeming to get it? Do they feel overwhelmed or do they, um, uh, how are, how are they progressing? Oh, so first off, um, Grandma D, I appreciate you sharing sharing your reflections on that. I think that's really important for us to hear um, your experiences. And then um, thank you, Ramon, for sharing. It's uh, it's always tough at the beginning of a new school year. <laughs> that's kind of what I uh, have come to learn. But um, uh, so at Weatherford. Um, what we've been doing is so I've designed I've basically designed our um, curriculum and our units. I've organized our curriculum into units and uh, developed my daily lessons from those units. And primarily, I'm using the uh, conversational the lessons that we developed through this through these sessions last spring. Um, the ones that, uh, you know, for level one, basically, all of our conversational um, materials. And so we started out at the beginning of the year just kind of talking about um, what is, you know, what why are endangered languages important? Why should we care? And what is language revitalization? And then we moved into kind of talking about, you know, Kiowa, Kiowa language, Kiowa language revitalization and why that's important and all of that. We watched some of the videos that are available on the Kiowa website um, so there, and also on YouTube. There's um, 
some cool videos of our Kiowa elders talking about our language and why it's important. And so, so we could, that's kind of how we started. And then we got into the help phrase. So we got into the sounds of Kiowa, then the help phrases, and then we got into starting with our conversations, uh, starting with our uh, the greetings and then farewells. So right now we're working with farewells. And so, so the way I've set it up is, um, so I have to put in like at least two graded assignments a week, um, according to our Weatherford high school. And, and I also have to have to like document, you know, like, ex um, how the children are, how the students are, you know, how their proficiency is developing. So what I did was I created, um, I'm using the integrated performance assessment model uh, for language acquisition. And so the students for each unit have to complete a interpretive task in Kiowa. They have to complete an interpersonal task in Kiowa, and then they have to complete a presentational task in Kiowa. And so each um, unit um, has, and each lesson has those tasks in them. So right now we're in unit two. And so they're getting ready to, they just finished their um, interpretive task for unit two, which was uh, basically to create a uh, storyboard um, where you have characters, uh, either people, animals, inanimate objects, talking, greeting each other in appropriate situations. And they're graded on their use of written Kiowa and they can't use English. And then they have to present it to the class. And so some of them got really, really super creative. There's one uh, student, I think they're a Kiowa descendant. Like I think their grandmother is Kiowa or was Kiowa, but they're enrolled uh, Cheyenne and Rapaho. And anyway, this one student, <laughs> she's a senior this year, um, basically recorded her phrases by using this like little computer programmed robot and used music notes to approximate Kiowa tones. So it's kind of really interesting, the stuff that, and then others like got really artistic and made like this whole graphic novel page. Like anyway, so that was just some of the stuff they submitted um, last week. And then this week they're doing um, their interpersonal task using greetings and farewells, which is they have to record a conversation uh, with each other they have to buddy up and record a conversation and so and they can't use english and they only can use the help phrases um in order to you know get help from someone so they uh what's kind of cool and a lot of fun is i have a good mix i have about five kiowas in our class i have about 20 students five of them are kiowas most of them are cna and then i have probably about another four or five that are non-native. And actually two of them are their siblings and they're Hispanic. And so they're fluent Spanish speakers. And oh. Weatherford only offers either Spanish or computers. Like, and now they have Native American language. So these two students, these siblings, they're like, hey, we're gonna take Native American language, but they're fluent Spanish speakers. So literally their whole computers are like all in Spanish. You know, like it's all, like they're learning English, <laughs> but anyway, so Kiowa comes really easily to them. And it's so, oh. it's been so interesting to like have conversations about the, the um, similarities and differences and the translations. And so anyway, I try to do a lot of creating like real situations where they can use it. Um, and so they have to do a lot of like pair and share. They do small group work. They have to do a lot of conversations with each other. And then I'll like go around the room and like basically, you know, observe them, watch them and correct them if they have tones that they need to adjust. Another thing that's, I guess, really a blessing for Weatherford is they require all their students to have Chromebooks. So the school actually issues a Chromebook laptop um, to every single student at the beginning of the year. And then all the teachers have to create lessons using their learning management system, which is Schoology for Weatherford. And so that's how the students like submit everything. And one of the cool things in Schoology is part of the quizzes that you can design is you can have them to submit an audio or a video recording as like a response to a quiz or a test. And so their weekly quizzes that they get every week have to do with translating from, you know, Kiowa to English 
or they have to record themselves saying something. And I started out with putting it in Kiowa and then they would say it. And now we're at the point where I can put it in either English or Kiowa and then they'll be able to say it as long as it's within, you know, the phrases and the framework that we've already learned. Um, so it's really cool because I can hear like their tones and then I can also correct them and then they can go back into their and they get the feedback because like it'll send them an email and it'll say, okay, you got this feedback and then they play it and then they can hear like the correct way to say it, for instance, if they might have missed something. Um, but it's a lot of fun. And let's see. Oh, I wanted to share this really quick. Um, last, I think it was last weekend. You didn't know it was the weekend before last. Um, there was this big, like, I don't know, a new restaurant was opening in Weatherford. And so they invited the Native American club to bring their dance troupe, the dancers and the singers and the drum and to come and perform. And like the high school band was going to be there and a bunch of football players. And so it's like a big old like to do happening on a Saturday. And so I got all my kids and we gathered all the other students that were participating. We go up there and we run into some of um, the students that are in my class are also in band and on the football team. And so it was really cool because I'm here with like my kids who like hear us talk all the time. And then their friends who are in the American club that hear it all the time. And they're being greeted in Kiowa by these non-native students that took Native American language because they saw me walking by and they're saying, hey, Hyundai, Hyundai, and I'm like, ha ha. It is like really cool. And then they know like the whole the sign language that accompanies it. So it was so fun. And I want to create more situations where they can use it. So Ramon, if there's an opportunity for our students to like interact at some point, even if it's on Zoom, I would totally be all about that because I think it'd be so cool to get them excited to see there's other students that are doing the same thing. And basically what what I've kind of convinced them of is they're all like our little classroom. It's basically they're all, they're all now a part of Kiowa language revitalization. They're a part of saving our language and they're helping us save it. And they're all like super excited about it. So anyway, I'm really proud of them so far and I hope they all stay motivated. Oh, I, I oh, really that, like that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's. I think that'd be neat, Ramon. If you and Melody, um, got on Skype or uh, you know, whatever, got on Zoom, and uh, and y'all could uh, you know, with your class and her class, and put it on uh, the projector, and then y'all could y'all's classes could talk to each other. You know, y'all could maybe have a little script out of what you might say in Kiowa to each other, and do that. That'd be neat. Oh. <laughs> I'd also like to, um, there's a like Buffalo doc documentary screening going on uh, in the Wichita mountains on, I think like November 2nd or something like that. Um, but, uh, let's see, um, with that, the class was invited and, um, I'm not sure if the TIPO officer uh, wanted to invite um, other classes. I can talk to her. Um, but one of those things, one of those events I was telling my class was, you know, eventually we're going to, you know, try to meet with the other classes that are learning, you know, and y'all are going to have to speak. And it's funny because they'll all get, you know, the big eyes and then they'll one <laughs> ask, can I take, can I take my notes with me? <laughs> Write them on your hand. <laughs> uh, there's the language fair coming up. So that sounds like there'll be a lot more high school students speaking. Usually it's mostly singing. Hey, that's and, a good one. So enter your students. They can do um, that. That's a good one to do. Enter the students into the language fair. Oh, 
I love that. Yeah, um, that is actually something that um, at the beginning of the year, we were going over the syllabus. I wrote into the second semester curriculum is their big group project, because each semester they have to do group project. And their big group project for spring is going to be per, um, creating a performance for one of the categories in the language fair and actually going and performing. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see what they come up with, you know, whether or not they actually decide to go and perform. I mean, you know, that's that'll be kind of up to them, but um, at least they'll have a performance that I can record in the classroom, whether or not they are ready to go, you know, participate. I have a feeling that like the non-native students probably won't feel as comfortable. I don't know. They might change their mind by then, but um, I know for sure, like our native students are really interested in it and they've never been. So they're really like really looking forward to it. But um, some of the non-native students are still kind of like, they, they're kind of figuring it out, you know, trying to see what they're, comfortable with but I love that I think that's totally something we could do and who knows um maybe if there's a Kiowa language fair we'd have some participants <laughs> is it, isn't there a one of the grants where what is what's going on with one of the grants where you have to is it spring break and there's a camp um, I don't think we've gotten the OIE grant Unless it's something else. We did not. Well, <clears throat> your non-native students, when they get there, there's Chickasaws there, so they they won't be out of place. <laughs> That's no, uh, comfortable. If huh? you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be sticking out. <laughs> as non -natives. And Osages. <laughs> Chickasaws and Cherokees. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. Funny. Um, well, so uh, so all of us have kind of talked about our classes. Um, Courtney, would you like to talk a little bit about your class and if you're able to incorporate any Kiowa into your um, his is it a history class or Indian studies class? It's called Native American Expressions. Okay. Um. um Yes, I do. I try to teach them some of the greeting phrases. Um, it's not language specific. So um, we study all the, uh, not all, but we try to travel through all the regions of um, Indian country and study about the tribes in those regions and characteristics and major contributions. Um, and then in the plains, of course, we really hit Kiowa's hard and, um, major, in addition to the contributions, we also talk about the, um, his, the different tribes' histories and their experiences. So, um, we'll talk about, like, we just finished up with, um, They'll take the test tomorrow um, from the Northeast with Haudenosaunee and the influence to the United States and the uh, their uh, the democracy and great law of peace. And then um, we do with each unit, I try to do guest speakers from the tribes or from a tribe from that region. Um, after this unit, um, we'll, we'll do like a stickball demonstration and um, they'll learn about the history of lacrosse and um, the tribes that influence lacrosse. And then um, Indian removal is, um, we try to uh, learn about the different perspectives of tribes, experiences of Indian removal and um, boarding school. We've been teaching about boarding school for since I've been there. And I know that the class has been in, in Edmond for um, probably close to 20 years now. And I've been teaching it the last seven. 
Um, and then um, Southwest. And then we, if we have time, it's a semester class. So sometimes we don't always make it to the Northwest coast in Alaska. Um, we will teach on, we'll go all the way through to that point. And then um, I do it different each semester where I'll do, sometimes I'll do a tribal report. Um, sometimes I'll do a tribal project or non tribal project, a project like uh, recently because of the, um, we, we have the book now for Killers of the Flower Moon for the young readers version. We'll, um, we've read that the last couple semesters and our students will, we talk about um, the, um, how the, the oil wealth and um, land dispossession as well as connecting it to present day like issues that we're still dealing with like missing and murdered um, people and so they'll research a project on um, or an issue I'm sorry they'll research something an issue in Indian country and they'll create a um, final project on that and then in the Sometimes we'll do um, where they'll research like a, a native um, or a issue, uh, issue policy, um, Indian policy, and learn about the history of that and how it Im implies today or how we see it today in Indian country. And then um, just different stuff. I kind of switch it, change it up every semester if they do like, we haven't done a tribal research project in a while where they are assigned a tribe and then they learn about their language family, they learn about their present um, leadership and government and how they, the programs and services that are provided for citizens. And then um, one thing I was gonna mention to you guys that my class has always um, been, uh, pretty well, I guess, um, enrollment numbers are always usually pretty good anywhere between like 25 to 30 um, that they always look forward to is that each semester or each unit, we will do a um, hands-on cultural project and they will try to, I try to like match it with that region if I can. And they all really like that. Um, so they'll learn basket weaving. And um, we've done where they kind of learn about applique and then um, the paper applique more. Um, and then beadwork, they, they all learn loom beadwork. And so if it's a bigger art cultural project, then I will, there, we have an art show in the school um, each semester. And so they enter those art pieces into the school-wide art show. And we have our own little section. Um, I think one year I did like for, like they learned about Southwest um, pottery and we were able to do um, just the basic like pitch pots, but then they learned about some of the designs of some of the different tribes of the Southwest and did their um did, did some of that on the their potteries the best that they could and kind of explained it but that's a how our how my class is set up right now and then um we try to, I try to help show them or teach them about just the distinctions of the different um tribes and um, by giving them examples and, of course, drawing on my own experience on Kiowa and teaching them about that. And um, the class is majority non-Native students. Right, right now, I have probably five students that are on our Indian Ed program that, I, um, that are in the class. And maybe some of them might have descendants or families that they, they think are um, Native American but um, aren't on the Indian Ed program. So, but many of them 
probably majority of them are non-native. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about Native American expressions. Um, what else? Um, can't think of anything else. That was really fast. <laughs> that was good. Um, and uh, I think we have Dane isn't here, but if um, I don't know, Miss Pula, if you could talk a little bit about the um, OU class um, and how you guys have been. I know that y'all have added things and are, you know, you see something that might work better from the previous semester, implement it in the next semester. And how are things going in your uh, classes this semester and how are y'all doing in there? Okay, um, I don't think Dana is going to be on here. Um, we, I always like to start my semester every year um, by giving them assignments for the uh, cultural part of our tribe. And I'm just dealing with Kiowa, but bringing everybody like, uh, say, Courtney does. Uh, but it makes it easier. And thankfully, the Kiowa tribe has all these cultural points so there's a lot of lot of um, topics they can pick from, and they have their choice, and then they have to go out and do research on that, and put together some PowerPoint charts, and then when it's time for us to begin presenting those, they come in and um, give the report, and it's really kind of teaching the other class members uh, something that they didn't have time to look up or didn't know about. So. Um, I try to do it early in the semester so that we can get that done and then go on to the lessons and things because all of it takes a lot of time and you're only in there for 50 minutes for your class so you have to time everything in there but um when I'm teaching the third level third and final level so I'm lucky in the case that they've already gone through and learned the beginning uh language uh, and so by the time they get to mine, I'm at the third level. So it's easier, really, in my class, because they already um, know the words. They know some phrases. Uh, they can talk to each other. And each time we're in there on our free time, when we're not doing those reports, um, that's what I have them do is practice speaking to each other. And the first thing we go through are the greetings and farewells to get them used to that, just a small amount of that. And eventually we'll move on into um, actual subjects that we want to talk about. Um, most of my students are um, non-native. Uh, this semester, I was lucky to have three Kiowas in my class. And the fun about that is that they already understand who we are. So it seems to be easier for them to get into uh, the, the different phrases and they, Every time we talk about anything, I have them look at the English part and say, say this in Kiowa, because I want to hear you pronounce it. So we do it enough that they are comfortable with it. Uh, now, we haven't had any quizzes yet. We will have our first one on Monday. And the first question I always get asked for the non-natives is, are we going to do these um, quizzes verbally? Are written and I said no I have to do them written because it would take us a long time if each one of them had to answer all those things so it's always easier to do that and it gives them the um, uh, ability to write it so they're doing a little bit of everything in there and they are very good at pronouncing by the time they get to my level I'm always just amazed how well they can talk so I teased them and I said I can take you all to a bunch of Kiowa elders and you'll do real good. I said, people will understand everything you're saying. So it's just repetitive um, things that we go over and we do use our books. Um, we used to do them every semester. Now we've kind of just um, modified them so it didn't take that much time. And that's kind of it. Oh, they all mm day. -hmm. Oh, I, I like that because it's like everybody has different um, uh, things that they're working on. So me in the community and and Kutonghi uh, uh, Tali is doing um, uh, uh, 
more younger, like ninth graders and, and Melody's doing the, you know, she has like seniors, a big mixed group and then expressions with, with, uh, um, Courtney and Miss Pula with the, with Kiowa three. So it's, it's interesting to see how we're all, you know, figuring um, out how to work with our, with our groups and, um, yeah, how we're making it. So, um, I don't know. I just, I, I really like, uh, what everybody's doing and I'm glad, uh, that just on here, we've talked about five classes. So, and then, and that's not even including us with trying to learn. <laughs> so, um, uh, let's see. I saw Akima tonight at, um, uh, event and she was kind of telling me about her class she could tell you about her class but I will say one thing that if uh, it feels like this for any of you guys but um, we do a she was talking about how she feels like she does a lot of review and I said yeah that's how I feel because we're doing we always are doing reviews well I mean you're supposed to is just consistent reviewing but mm -hmm. Um, I think we, we're taking a test tomorrow and I think we, my, my students were kind of freaking out yesterday or something. I was like, you guys got it. We got one more day of review and they did, they, they're ready, but, um, we've been reviewing all week. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they, uh, it just takes, I mean, if, especially if, if they're, you know, if they're not a part of the, the culture and community then it, it is remember that part of it too for a lot of new learners oh huh. so huh. Um, that's a good don't point don't be afraid Courtney. to use yeah. that time for because we're you know we're there for them to learn and that's what we want them to do oh so huh um, that's that's something that I started off at the beginning of the school year is telling my students at Weatherford is, you know, I tell, I quote that afraid, the little statistic that we use all the time with ourselves, you know, you have to hear something, say something, use something 400 times at least before it becomes fluent in your brain. And so we kind of talked about language acquisition and like your neural pathways in your brain. And so every time, you know, all the time, like whether it's bell ringers, like I'm greeting them, they're greeting me when they're coming into the class and then when everyone's leaving and then all throughout class every day, it's like, we seem like we're always, like I try to recycle as many phrases as we can, like just use all the vocabulary, you know, and all the language that we've learned so far. And I always tell them like, yep, this is part of that 400 times. Are we there yet? Nope. Okay. <laughs> we got to keep practicing. So that's a, it's kind of a, a running joke. And some of them tease that in their journals, they're keeping tallies of, <laughs> of it, but it's, it's kind of, it's, that's been kind of a fun way to get them to be comfortable with we're going to say this like over and over and over until we can say it the way that our, you know, mentors want us to say it, you know, so we can understand each other. Yeah. Yeah. I like that 450 times before it becomes part of your stuck in your brain. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. And we need to see if we can get, um, Oh, <laughs> well, and me at 30 years of trying to learn pronouns. <laughs> I don't know if that's ever going to I've been work. reviewing for <laughs> 30 years of, of pronoun review and I still can't get it. <laughs> so, uh, I think anyway. you're getting it. <laughs> um, anyway, for some verbs and just simple stuff, mm. but, uh, Anyway, and I was like telling earlier to Miss Kathy, um, just getting that structure down um, really helps uh, when you're hearing Kiowa to be able to understand it. So it, it's not just sounds coming at you. It's uh, phrases that you can understand. It's sentences that you can understand because you know where the um, verb and the pronoun and the, and the 
nouns are and it it starts making more sense to you once you get that down so and that's why commands are so good because uh it's just a short phrase you know that that um uh, uh, a verb is going to be at the end and the pronoun is going to be right next to the verb so um and that's why uh in on the front so uh i just so that's why I think commands are, you know, helpful to learn in the beginning. So do we have a, um, hang on. Oh my goodness. That's all and don't give. Uh, do you have, do we have a word for pass or give or, you know, like right now I've just learned, you know, like you said, I'm not aware around Kiowa's. So I'm having to, well, uncle Charlie, Silverhorn's here, but you know, he's like, you know, when I say a word, he giggles and then takes off. I mean, that's the way he is. Uh, well, so you want to pass the bread, you can just like, hold out the bread and say ma for here. If you want somebody to give it to you, uh, you or like you could say, um, um, if I like want somebody to pass me the salt, on uh, yeah. yeah, what? Yeah, what? On what? Uh, uh, is, you know, to, uh, is, I don't know what, what was, what's the verb for that? Uh, like, hey, uh, uh, come here, here, come here. here. Okay. So here, so here, I want it here. What's another way to say, um, to pass, give somebody your something. If you want something passed to you, Miss Harriger. Hey, well, no, ball. Oh, no, uh. No, -uh. okay. So that uh is a good one. We're gonna for rinse here, it. like give here, like give here, but here. Ma is like, you know, you're giving it to someone, and I uh is giving it to me, you know. So wait a minute, a time is salt, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. where did we put everything there? Okay, so that would be the noun, right? Right. Okay, and so the ah uh would be at the end, right? So what's going to go between the noun and the verb? Right next to the verb is always the that little bitty tiny word, that little pronoun, right? No pronoun, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. So then whatever pronoun it is. So... um. The pronouns change, and you cannot always use the same pronoun. So it's it's weird, you know. To to you can't really. I can't. So for that one phrase, do not always use that same pronoun. But for that one phrase, uh, it's saying a whole lot in that one little tiny word between autant I and on. Right, that little one phrase is young. And what oh. that saying is you give all those little grains of salt to me. Isn't that how you might describe it, Mrs. Pula? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta kind of break it down, break it up. Mm -hmm. You understand? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a hard one. And I wouldn't write, I mean, that's just a hard one. Well, I'm mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to tell my husband to pass me the salt. <laughs> <laughs> you know and so just you know we're learning he learned salt you know uh -huh. so and how you would you say the same thing uh so it's like soy say on yeah yeah would you say that too would you use the young for that one yeah yeah it's about uh -huh. the best, yeah. best one to use yeah so it's say on yeah yeah so mm -hmm. that's salt and pepper salt and pepper yeah yeah but i mean so i know okay, you know the nouns it's right. uh I, I know I know you know the nouns pretty well, um uh uh Kathy. It's getting um the the uh Man, the yeah. verb at the end and then that middle but part I, that's the, the hardest the, part. Would normally use at home. I mean, even the kids, you know, they go home and you know, they can be at the table and you mm -hmm. know, break out and you know, I know you did that a couple of years ago, you know, and I missed that class, so uh but yeah it's in google drive some of that stuff's in google drive in those uh power 
in those uh, videos and PowerPoints because Courtney did one and um, she did a video and we did a PowerPoint with Sesame Street. Okay. So if you look at that, kind of watch that stuff. It's hard to find. So there's nothing for past the, or give, you know, like even, you know, pass me the potatoes or pass me meat or, you know. So, you know, the, you know, the nouns, I, E, A, and G, yeah, right? right? You know all the nouns for that. Uh -huh. And but so, I'm, I'm going to get so them what would be the best? So then you got the nouns for it. So what would be the best verb? Give me or, you know, or. The best verb for that. Miss, uh, Miss Herger, would you still, if you're saying pass the meat or potatoes, would you still use, uh, like I, E, A, I don't even know the pronoun and then, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh. it's still, yeah, uh, okay. okay. It's like, give, yeah. give me like, that item. Yeah. Okay. Give me that item. I, P, I, I, P, A, uh, is it I, P, A? Yeah. I yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah uh. IPA. IPA. Uh, can you say then? Uh, I taught. I taught. I. I taught. I. That <laughs> one. Taught I. That one, Kathy. <laughs> you're gonna have to really work on your T's and your D's for that one. That was a good uh, one, like I. a tongue twister for for your Kiowa speech impediment. Hey. Eh? <laughs> um, so like, uh, wait a minute, uh, you're breaking up. You're... It's like if you're doing um, salt that has all your T's in there that you need to work on. So that's a good one for you to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, let me write, put it in the chat. Uh, I. Okay. I wonder if I should do a W that helps people with the. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to send this to you. Okay. 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 And another thing I want to tell you is something now, uh, Cricket, that um, if you're saying you need to have the salt, you sit at a table and you're asking someone to give you the salt. Oh. We're, saying, we're thinking in Kiowa, we're speaking in Kiowa, we're not saying pass me the salt. That's right. English. That's English. That's why you have to revert it to whatever your your language is. So you're mm -hmm. saying, give me that. And then when they hand it to you, then you thank them. You know, so right. you kind of oh. together. You know. And if I'm have if I'm the one that has the salt, then I would just say ma for here. Yeah, you could just do that and hand it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, um, so I P E A. And what was the other one? Ki. Oh. Uh, well, would you, you still? Know, it, what would the pronoun? How would you ask for that one? What would the pronoun be for that one, Miss Hergur? If you ask somebody to give you the meat. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. What about Mark now? What's ski and ball? Or you could say bot ball, bot ball. Yeah. It's like ski, bot ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bot yeah. ball. Okay. Yeah, like that too. Okay. Bot ball. You're asking someone to give you that. Okay. Bot. Because right. there's different ways to say it. Mm -hmm. Right, because we're not like oh, you said. We don't you. say "give me," but I guess would you just use the command word then? You just command them to, you know, just key. You know, I mean, they should know it. Or do we? You know, how did they do it back in the day? I mean, ask for for things from you know across the table, or that's that's pretty much the way they ask for it you know could okay you hand it to me it basically is what it means you know can you hand it to me yeah okay. can you hand it to me? 
that but if you're talking about liquids and stuff mm -hmm. that can that can turn into something different so uh or even napkins you mean like tone there uh, yeah give me the water mm -hmm. or can you hand me the water Is there a sentence for that, or you just want somebody to give you give you a cup of water or a bottle of water? <laughs> no, we have bottles. Um, um, just water. Yeah, uh, you could you would say, "Go tone, ain't on. Go go ain't on. Ain't on. Yeah, give me some water. Ain't on." Galton ain't all. Mm -hmm. Give me some water. I mean, because that for I mean, and <clears throat> I'll probably ask them kind of questions because I'm not going to go into teaching. I'm not, you know, going to educate, but you know, I like to just, you know, uh, with Uncle Charlie, you know, running around here, you know, every once in a while, I'll you know, blurt out something and, and then my still here, <clears throat> you know, so she, uh, she understands a little bit. And then my daughters, they all want to, you know, so I'm, I give them small ones because they're not, you know, it just, it, it's so fast life right now, I guess here, I don't know, just, uh, mm -hmm. just passing by. And if we just happen to be sitting at the table eating, you know, that's a good time to, you know, break out some, you know, break out into Kiowa or something, you know, and it's just, uh, mm -hmm. for me, it's just learning. I'm still learning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're doing good. Mm -hmm. And you got, you got your nouns down really well and, uh, practice that, that, um, that autant I. Autant I. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> practice that. And you can slow it down so that it's not so overwhelming a long word. Right. You yeah. can say the first part, all time and then time is why oh, oh, time is that you know taste it's different it's kind of not bitter but it's strong taste there so all time i just practice okay. it like that till you kind of get the feel of it not all time right okay all time, time. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i appreciate the the you know and i i'm glad you guys are teaching young ones and all that you know that's you know hopefully it's not an e easy language to uh, to get I mean you, you got a lot to um, you know a lot of pronouns and, and like you said I mean gosh you know I, I just hope everybody you know it's going to take a lot of people for one language you know <laughs> you know it's it, from what i'm looking seeing you know if you guys are teaching like that each class is going to have something to offer to the language you know it's not like it's overlapping and everybody's doing the same thing you know which is and good you guys can come together and and maybe be something you know even more stronger in a language you know well, and you sharing on the radio is important too. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and I do, I do do the greeting, and I do the, you know, the farewell. You know, um, I'm still, you know, I, and talking about, you know, music uh, as far as Kiowas and all that. Still, you know, I'm still learning that too. So, it's coming about. So, yeah. All right, and if you look in the chat, Courtney put some stuff in the chat for you. Okay. Oh. Ah, oh, okay. Pour the water. Sit down. Oh, we know. We all know. Sit down. Eat around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ha. <laughs> um. So the uh oh, killer's thing is a a thing of. To come on is uh, I'm seeing it on TV. I have my sound off. Oh. Oh, that's awesome. This is the first one I've seen. Oh my gosh, it has a lot of action in it. 
in this, uh, what does it call a trailer? For what movie? A commercial, a commercial for Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh. October 20th. Okay. Um, so uh, the the other thing that we need to talk about and um, we need to, and I think Ramona is going to reach out to Julia because I think she's going to join um, the, our NVR group. Um, and, uh, and so she's, uh, he's going to reach out to her about getting on our zooms. Cause this is how we, we talk to each other and we do our learning with our mentors and, um, and, uh, anyway, so we need to talk about our zooms outreach that we're supposed to do in December. And, um, if there is anything else that, um, we need to, uh, that we need to do. Uh, think about what do we need to think about. I was thinking. Uh, um, I I like I'd like to be able to, you know, if each one of us does something and shares. Uh, I like the I'd like to do like a same day story since that's a winter time thing. Um. Uh would be fun to do a song, uh, one of, you know, a, a Christmas hymn song, uh, Melody uh, has the memories. So if we kind of compile some of the different winter and Christmas things that we've, and a seasonal, you know, holiday season thing that we put together, that would be, um, we could do a, a, an outreach for adults and families on Zoom in December. Oh. Um, and I'll have to uh, look, I'll go back over our recording, I think it might have been last week and the week before when we kind of talked about some ideas, because I think we put it in our chat box, but I'll need to pull it out and I can send out like some of our notes um, that way for next week. Um, we can all like have all the notes that we've made so we can kind of think about all right, what's it going to start to look like? So we know what parts we're going to sign up for and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got um, looking at the week of um, 11th, 12th, or 13th, um, or 18, 19, or 20. Do we want to keep it on a Wednesday since we already meet on Zoom on Wednesday? Or we can put it on a Monday for the Monday class, whichever. It doesn't matter to me. Anyway, just look at your calendars, look at your work calendars, your kids' calendars, and see, looking at like a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, the 11th, 12th, or 13th, 18, 19, or 20. Of December? And, uh huh. For the uh, outreach, the Zoom outreach. I think 18, 19, and 20 is too late. Yeah. So looking at 11, 12, or 13? Or four, five, six. I cannot do that because we have um, our OC conference then. No later than the following week then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, what is that? The 11th, 12th, 13th, like you said? Uh-huh. You know, that might have to be the day. Okay. Uh, yeah. It is, uh, do you, do you, um, for, for us, it, we could do it on the 11th, that would take our Monday class or we could do it on the 13th and that would be the Wednesday class. And we could also do it on the 12th, you know, combine both of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to look at, uh, cause I have, uh, one, one of my daughters is in band. So I need to look and see if they've like released the winter. They usually have a winter concert. Oh, one yes. of those weeks in December. And I think it's always on a Tuesday. So okay. I, I would say uh, we should probably avoid Tuesdays, but um, okay. 
I mean, and Wednesdays, like if we want to adjust the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Courtney says, yeah, Monday or Wednesday. Preferred. Okay. All right, so let's pick, so we let's mark out the 12th <laughs> and put the 11th or the 13th and eat. And I'm I'm the same way. I need to look at my son's band thing as well. Glad you mentioned that. Yeah, I need to go and look at that before I commit to <laughs> commit to a date. <laughs> I'll, I'll find out by next week. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll put it on my list to send a follow up. Okay, Courtney says Wednesday is good for her. Okay. Yeah, I want to say Wednesday would probably be the the best day, okay. but and then we but, could um, use Monday to plan or something or practice. Yeah, remember how we used mm -hmm. to do like uh yeah. practice? Yeah, practice so we could do that because we'll have our in person on uh Monday. And I could just, you know, say that this, we're going to kind of go over what we're doing in our, on our Wednesday Zoom. Oh, that'd be fun. Is that going to be your, like, the, that's going to be the December in person? Yeah. If we, You're if we do it on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. On the Monday. What if I know that you, you know, you do the whole, you do in-person stuff first and then you do Zoom. What if that you just do the practice during the Zoom time? Unless, okay. unless, yep. uh, you know, unless there's people in person that need to practice too, but just mm -hmm. throwing that out there, that way you don't have to like dedicate your whole time to practicing, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we might go over just some of the stuff on, um, uh, in the beginning and then we usually eat and then we'll do the zoom part. Okay. I'm trying oh. to find. I thought I took us. I'll just ask him <clears throat> when our thing is. When is banned? Okay. So so right now it looks like thirteenth is the better day, and then practice maybe on the eleventh. Oh, um, so that sounds Monday. like tentative. <laughs> mm -hmm. And thirteenth. So let's. Let's look and make sure, because I, I do need to check on our band stuff, too, and, and they do it. I don't know when they do it. <laughs> um, We might need to, I don't know, uh, Ramon, if you have uh, stuff and Courtney, like, we'll probably all have to check calendars, and maybe someone might need to check with uh, Julia's calendar, too. So maybe um, next week we can regroup and make sure it's good okay. for the 11th and 13th. Okay. I'll pencil it in for my for mine and then I'll let y'all know if there's a conflict or something. Okay. All right. All right. Um do any of our elders have anything that they would that they'd like for us to learn? <laughs> Ms. Haragara? Well, right now, don't maybe when you start planning, that's okay. not really what not to do. <laughs> okay. Oh. No, right. no, no, you know, just as. Okay. Make sure that we do things a culturally appropriate way. Oh, Miss Pula, is there anything that you would like um, for us to take away tonight? Are you there? Or did, did you step yeah, away? Yeah, I stepped, stepped away for a little bit. Okay. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> I was talking about name. <laughs> oh. Uh, we we're we we're just asking if there's anything that you would like to add for us uh, for us learners to our us learner teachers to have to um, that you may want us to know or take away tonight. Well, let's see. I think that sometimes when we're uh, going over uh, those lessons and stuff and and, uh, and getting to um, 
uh, say the phrases. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, we have samples of small bits and parts. If we can learn to kind of extend those phrases, so it's a whole whole thought or whole sentence, you know. Okay. I think that would kind of be a better practice to get everybody to speak it a little bit more. That's what I think. Can you give me an example? Well, like, you know, sometimes we have just those two little parts in there or something. And offhand, I can't think of the one right now, but like, um, well, we're talking about kinship, you know, uh -huh. about, uh, the other day we went over that in our Monday class. Right. Like say we have that root word there. And then, we you know, we were going over those different ways of saying, um, saying that way. Huh. In that case, I'll say the example would be if you could put a whole sentence together and, huh. then, and then say like a name or who you're mm -hmm. talking about and then say say the whole sentence. I think it makes more sense and yes. it makes people feel a little more comfortable with it. Okay. That's um, my thing. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so like when we said, um, uh, hing or hang for mm -hmm. spouse, yeah, then we could say, uh, na, hing. Let's see, there's was my pronoun. Uh, I don't remember pronoun, da. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would I say? Ain't, would I just, would I don't know, would we ain't da? Yeah. Ain't okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would it's, it be ain't da? Yeah. Or like we were going to introduce your son or daughter to somebody, mm -hmm. you would okay. you know say uh, whatever their name is. You want to say that, or or just tell them who it is, and you'll say uh, Andy E Ta Ain't Da. See, so you got a whole sentence there. You don't just have that little part that you're trying to learn. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get better if we hear more of the sentence. Yeah. Practice, yeah, like that. Yeah. And we did we did do that with the other kinship terms, mm -hmm. but we didn't do that with, with the ones on this past Monday. Right. Um I did have that down as another that another activity for us to do to make the sentences out of it, but uh we can do that, we can do that in uh, our next Monday class. So make mm -hmm. sentences um with those with those phrases. Yeah, I think that that's where the, your conversation the kinship. comes in. Yeah. Okay. Kinship terms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kinship so it's terms. Like, uh, is it like na kongi and da? And da. Yeah. You're saying somebody's name and you're saying that's my grandpa or whatever. Yeah. So you're saying a whole sentence anyway. So Clarence, so Clarence na kongi and da. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. uh, the uh, and I was wondering. Okay, that's a really good. I like that. Um, so instead of just doing like our phrase, our our uh kinship word or term, term. make sure mm -hmm. that we every time do the phrase. So yeah, do a little practice and have a better. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And yeah, yeah that's on. exactly what, and I actually wanted to do that, but I felt like we were, because we started late, we ran out of time. Yeah. And I think I started about like 15 minutes late and I can't do that in our uh, Monday class because we can't, we don't have time because I have to get on Zoom. Yeah. Um, so uh, the other thing I was thinking, that's a good, I make sure that we do that. I, I wrote it down and I started, um, is, uh, I was wondering next time we get on Melody, I think we were supposed to have done it this time, but I don't know because I, I was on the plane last Monday, so I don't know what y'all did, but were we supposed to do um, our conversation stuff? Oh, so what I did, what we did last week is I sent out the email with the level two lesson one, which is the Kiowa greetings. Okay. Um, and then we just, uh, basically we looked at it and we pulled it up on screen, picked one of the conversations. Well, we kind of went down the list. So like, I just called on someone and said, Hey, let's be buddies. And who's a, who's B. And then we 
did the we picked a conversation and then we said it and then our mentors corrected us okay. um and then we kind of just whoever was person b at the end would call on someone else and then they would so we kind of just rotated and it was it was a lot of fun we we went through a lot faster and um it was okay. a lot of fun i don't know uh grandma martha or grandma d if you had any comments on what we did last week no, because those are kind of a little more conversational, so you can hear you say it, and it's more practice for you, and you, that that will give you the feel for, this is what I need to be doing, talking to somebody, you know, oh. carrying on the conversation. It's just practice. The more mm -hmm. you hear it, the more, more comfortable you'll be with it. Yeah. The more you oh. do it yourself. Yeah. Um. Practice, practice. So do you, is level, is that lesson three, does it have the same thing on there with the conversation? And we could give that to us as homework to do um, for next Wednesday. Yeah, I'll send out the, um, the uh, I'll attach the lesson, the first one, which is the farewells and the greetings. So we'll have two to pick from. And so basically each week we'll have more options. <laughs> so basically anyone can pick, you know, any conversation and call on someone to be their buddy to do the conversation with. So eventually, you know, hopefully we'll get to the point where we could just all be in Kiowa the whole time. But um, each week we'll just add on and then, you know, mm -hmm. we'll go from there. But the way those conversations are written is they're cumulative. So they're built like the further you go, they'll, they'll have vocabulary from like the first, le you know, few lessons also. So mm -hmm. they're, you know, um, so are we yeah, going to be on lesson, lesson two? Like so two. last, last week was lesson one. And so then next week will be lesson two. Oh yeah. Cause okay. we didn't get to uh, practice it this week, which is okay. I think this was a good, it was awesome to be able to share about and hear about all our classes and what we're kind of doing and updates. I think that was awesome. And then we can, uh, we'll do, I'll send out both of the lessons. So we'll be doing lesson one and two uh, okay. next week. Okay. No, I won't be on next week because I'll be, uh, be down there at Comanche Nation. Oh, so, awesome. On Wednesday? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm traveling, so it takes okay. me. Takes I got to get while. Together. Yeah. Um, okay. Starting now. I'm starting to pack now, you know. But, All right. Uh yeah, I start traveling Wednesday. I gotta get down there Thursday morning. So yay. Okay. Come by and well, see the you'll booth. get it in your emails, Kathy. <laughs> All right. You're at Are you community. gonna have a booth? Yeah, I have a booth. That's okay. how the plane. Yep. All right, cool. For a year. All right. Well, uh Hey got I'm Oi Bonta at uh, Comanche Fair. It'll be Hey got I'm Oi Bonta. Um okay. Oh. All right. All right. Well, I hope <laughs> I hope I ran it the way you wanted to, Melody. <laughs> oh, no, I think that was awesome. Um how how was that uh Ramon, Courtney, Kathy? It was it was good. Was it? it was informative. You know, you guys are able to share what you're doing and, you know, we're able to you know, hear what you're doing. I, I enjoy it because I know what, you know, it, what you guys are teaching. It's, it's pretty cool. In the wildlife service, I don't think I need it. What was that? Yeah. Are we all like supposed to be doing a test run? You put things in the washer, put your stuff in first and then you close. That way you can get all Oh, I wanted to try to remember. There's something I keep trying to remember. And then you close. But, but, oh gosh, it's something I haven't written down and it's about throwing away the trash. And I just, I keep, I have to hear it. I've only, I haven't heard it 450 times yet. <laughs> uh mop beetle bot goot mop. what is to throw away the trash if that's like a command i need to get my kids to do <laughs> ma it's a mop, 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 mop bottle okay mop, 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 mop. Mop bottle okay bot goo mm -hmm. right uh, uh. Mm -hmm. goo. okay 
Okay. Mop bottle baku. I don't know if I spelled it right. Mop bottle baku. Mop bottle baku. Okay. Yeah, we had trash day today. So that was last night. Um. Okay. That was just, you know, since I, we we're going over commands at the beginning of our session today, I was, that was one command I was trying to remember. Dang, Mop our trash day good. Tuesday. So yeah. I have to wait until Tuesday to say that to him. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. Put it, I have it above my trash can at work. I'll put and, it on my calendar. I, still, <laughs> I just need to keep hearing it. Okay. Mop bottle spot goop. Trash days. Put it on your calendar. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Bakuba. Okay. Uh all right. I think that's it. Obaha. Oh. Uh -oh. Um, let's see. Uh Grandma Martha, mm -hmm. uh, if you're able to, bait outside. Oh, bait outside. Don't pound mine all day. I hope they get on the door. Key the only door. Um, hate, hate the going down there. Get those on the door. So I think I'll uh, eat my hammer. They do um tie do they um they only income um the go get those on my um. Please watch over and bless all the ones that attended here that could be here tonight. Uh, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us each and every day. Amen. Oh, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry. Oh. That was a question. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so Gutonghi, Tali, you said goi kong he ada. What is that the past tense for da or do you no. say da ma? You get pushed out there. No, you're just saying I'm without a Kaiwa name. So mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to say that da ma. It's cause... not a past tense. It's just. Right. And even no. even da ma is saying you like to not be. Uh huh. Um, like hana po hyum da ma. Yeah. I'm not well. That's... Yeah. So that's like. So it's still just da. Yeah, because you, I mean, it's a state of being because you are without a name still. Like I am without a name still, basically. Okay. okay. Well, as far as meaning, like it's present tense, meaning still, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Da. What did you say? Because sometimes those negative forms change the negative form of of something changes the verb that little ending of the verb yeah plus i mean whenever you say boy call hey a doll like that hey is obviously given reference that you don't or you're without something and then because if you did have a kaiwa name you would of course say it mm -hmm. okay okay so goi kong hang a da. Okay. Oh. And then if I say he doesn't have one, goi kong hang da. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, aho. Aho. Hey, gamba goi bonta. Oh, I'm out.